Welcome to live chat. You're live. All right. So let's spin that around. All right. We got one viewer. All right. Okay. So here, here we go. All right. We're live. Great. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Welcome to the inner sanctum. This is another live edition uh, after the popularity of last week's. And uh, oh, you want to spin it around here so I can see it? Here it is. Bad start already. Okay. Oh wait, no. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. We're doing good here. Technical difficulties. What else? Which one? The one on the back. What? What in the back? The camera on the back is higher quality than the front-facing camera. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey everyone, we're live and we're having technical difficulties like last time. But the good thing is the picture is nice and clear, so that's definitely a plus from last time. Now I'm gonna pull this up here on the YouTube channel, and make sure that's all good, and then I can see your comments and all that good stuff. Oh, lovely. All right. Okay. So anyone join us yet? No one. That's good because we haven't done anything good yet. So anyway, <laughs> this is a you know another live edition, and we're uh, you know continuing on. Uh, from last week, last Sunday, because some of the people really liked that and really got into it, so that's really cool. And uh, this is going to be the first episode of Dark Ambient Reactions, where I have a guest on the show, and uh, I'm going to play them Dark Ambient music and get their candid, uh, you know, reactions to what they think. And you know, if maybe they'll love it, maybe they'll hate it, maybe they'll think it's goofy, but uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. We're drinking. Me and uh, the guests today have been actually drinking since about so oh, about four hours ago. We were at the City Lights Brewery Tour, and we had we had brunch, we had a few beers, we had a brewery tour, and uh, we're feeling it, so we're good, and we're ready for some dark ambient music and some reactions. And uh, well, without further ado, let's bring her out. This is Miss Kara Zorel. Yay! <laughs> All right, so here she is. Uh, Kara, what can you tell us about yourself? Uh, well, um, I'm I'm your fiance. My fiance, there's that. Yeah. Um, I am also a musician. I have been in many bands over the last few years. Um, currently, lead singer and songwriter for the Mother Thing. Previously, keys and vocals for Asada, and before that, I was the lead singer for Magma Dragon. Yeah. And uh, she, her first band was actually a power metal band, so she, uh, you know, really had the really pumping up the vocals right from the get-go and you know just uh proves right from the get-go she's a fucking awesome vocalist and uh yeah she did that so it's really yeah a lot of people really like name my dragon unfortunately uh the band didn't only last a few years but it's good times that's actually how i got to know her because uh, i was looking for i was trying to do photography at the time looking for photo gigs and uh i saw they didn't have any photos and uh Thing led to another, and here we are, five years later, we're still together. So, it's, you know, it's meant to be. So, cheers. Yeah, cheers to that, you know. Um. Anyway, as I recall from our very early dates, I made it probably pretty obvious I liked dark music. Yes. Um, yes. Yes, you did. I remember the first time you came over to my house, you were like, "Holy shit, you got a synthesizer! What are you gonna do with that?" I feel like I did like an improv, uh, improv dark ambient session in the living room. I, I seem to recall that. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 our first couple of dates we were drinking a lot, a lot. Yeah, that's so true. This is definitely true. So uh, yeah, and uh, I remember doing some improv, dark ambient uh, thing in the in the living room, and this was this was before Knock the Game started, so you know it was uh, you know whatever. This so this is probably maybe if I ever decide to go live, so maybe how I should approach it too, just you know totally improv, whatever. I mean, I do appear on some of your Knock the Loop. And that's notable. Yes. So. As you may know, uh, Kara appears on my first album, Back to the Mud. She does uh, vocals on a couple songs. She's also appeared on Hajanai Negris, my recent split with uh, Deep Dark from Russia. And she's also on the, uh, I didn't, can't say it very well, the Dissension soundtrack with a couple of vocals. All right. Oh, this is my handmade packaging. This was my proper official release. Yeah. So. Under most circumstances, Kara has said that our house that we both uh, own and share is uh, vaguely similar to a haunted house. <laughs> I legit tell people that I live in a haunted she, house. 
So we live in a haunted house, but uh, maybe that hasn't been as haunted lately because now I have my upstairs man cave. So she's uh, oh, I still hear the rumbling. She still hears it because I have rumbling bass and it, it goes throughout the whole house. So uh, it is a lot quieter now. It is a lot quieter. So she gets a quieter house now, and I get my man cave. So we all we all everyone's winning. Yeah, it's all good. So uh, yeah. This beer we're drinking. Yes. So we are drinking. Uh, this is gumball head. You said. Yum yum. You're killing me. Okay, she's killing me. All right. All right. It's actually yum yum by Threes out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Um, I'm not usually a pale person, but this is a an American session ale, which is a pale ale. Um, it's not as hoppy as what you would expect from like an India pale ale, um, which I really appreciate because I'm not really into hoppiness too much. I do like a little bit of hops, but not extreme. I've never been an IPA fan. I, I kind of missed out on that whole thing. And now the sours are kind of taking over yeah. um, in terms of trendiness. But um, the Yum Yum is really nice, balanced beer, in my opinion, in terms of pale ales. It's got a really awesome honey and floral and a little bit of fruitiness, like aroma as well as flavor that just sort of carries through the entire drinking process and it, it's just it's really smooth it's really nice i really appreciate this beer it's awesome in the summer because it's light um it's super refreshing love this beer three floyds is awesome yeah um if you haven't ever tried this highly recommend it yum yum by three floyds and i don't normally like these beers and i kind of like this so that's that's really cool it, you know you got me going on this so yeah fuck yeah so, um, is there anything else like tell us about yourself or anything? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of excited to hear what you have planned for me. <laughs> well, okay. So, some of the albums I'm going to play for you, it's entirely possible you heard them coming out of, out of the, when, we, when I used to have my studio, man, well, I guess Half Man Cave downstairs probably heard some of these albums entirely possible but you probably never heard them very up close because you're probably in the other room or something sure so now you're gonna hear them a little more up close and you can give me your reactions to all it. right so, well uh... i guess as a disclaimer <laughs> like i'm a musician i'm an artist myself right. i may make fun of things yeah i definitely am not like intentionally like cutting down on anyone's music <laughs> but um I guess like if you're in if you're in the industry of making music you have to kind of go with the flow and be okay with people making fun of your stuff because trust me i've been made fun of too so yeah if i accidentally offend anyone i apologize yeah so uh and it's it, it's notable to mention that you know a lot of people uh aren't necessarily so uh so accustomed to the free form nature of dark ambient music either oh god I she's mean, probably more used to a verse chorus verse well, bridge chorus you know yeah. i mean i had never even heard of dark ambient yeah i didn't even know that that was a thing but probably when i played something you were like oh i've heard this in movies and other artists before though probably right well i mean i wouldn't be able to like pinpoint it necessarily right. but I guess my my ears aren't that attuned where I'd be like, oh yeah, that really ambient piece of music. I know exactly where that's from. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm more accustomed, like you were just saying, to like you know more traditional forms of music. But I mean, I never knew that dark ambient, like as a like obviously I knew that soundtrack music was a thing. Yeah. You know, I watch movies, so yeah. I knew that was a thing, but I didn't realize that there was like this whole subgenre of music where people were literally just making music that yeah. was very similar to like more cinematic like soundtrack kind of music that was out there so until i met you i literally didn't even know yeah. that, that existed and i don't i don't think a lot of people do know that that there's this genre of music that's been around for literally 30 years already and uh it's always sort of been like this like sub 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 genre of like black metal industrial and like, 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 it's like it's like a sub sub genre of like all heavy metals and then like industrial music and you know a anything you can think of really. it's, it's always been a sub sub genre but now it's finally in recent years largely I would have to say thanks to the cryo chamber label becoming its own thing and really becoming recognized as, as its own genre and uh, a lot of people are jumping on it and realizing it's, it's great music it's it's relaxing it can be therapeutic it's uh, you know great for reading book 
songs and stuff like that and just chilling out and uh, I mean what? sometimes I agree but sometimes I just find myself going what the fuck is happening right now sure understandable I mean you haven't been listening to this for like 20 years like I have so maybe it takes a, it's a process to get figure it all out or something I don't know maybe but uh anyway so it's like six people are watching so we're doing pretty good right already <laughs> So if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to, you know, chime in at any time and say, um, the guy in question is just, you know, oh, there's a question, good. Hello people, which day is it? I believe it's Saturday still, but I don't know where you're at, so I don't know what day it is for you. <laughs> if you're overseas, it's probably tomorrow. Whatever day it is, you should definitely drink this beer. Yes, so if you can find this in, uh, Wherever you state, are. country you reside in, you should give it a sip. It is wonderful. Um, also, if uh, we're not talking loud enough or you can't hear the music, let me know. We'll try and adjust it as best as possible because this whole thing's very uh, DIY style, obviously, and nothing's, you know, fancy or really glamorous here. We're just, you know, doing our thing. So, um, yeah. Are you ready for some dark campaign reactions? Bring it on. Right, we got a question first. This is the first stream of yours I am checking out. Cool. That's awesome. And there will most likely, uh, if we get a good following, continue to do more. We actually already have her friend on board who wants to come on and do a reaction show. Oh, so. and you definitely want And to you're going to want to watch that one because that's <laughs> going to be a good one because her friend is someone that doesn't listen to no. anything underground or any dark music in general. So it should be a fun episode to you know, see her reactions. <laughs> So maybe we'll do that in next week or a couple weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you for everyone who's joining us. You know, it's uh, great to be. You know, we're happy to do this. I love dark ambient music. It's just fun connecting to people. You know, around this country, around the United States, around the world. Because I just, I don't really know anyone around here who likes this kind of music. So I guess this is you know the only way I can really do it. And it's fun. We have a good time. So yeah. Questions. Greetings. Let's do this. All right. The beer we are having. It's three Floyds from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, in the United States. Um, it's called Yum Yum. Let me get a close yeah. up of the, the label. It's it's an American session ale, so it is a pale ale, but it's got a really nice, smooth flavor. It's not super bitter or hoppy like a lot of pale ales tend to be. It's got a really nice. It smells like honey and flowers, and it's it's it tastes pretty much exactly like that too so it's it's great it's a really nice light refreshing beer like if you want something that's not super heavy this is a great beer yeah for sure so all right we're gonna get into playing these uh albums i got lined up for you and uh i have to start this the album that's playing in the background is a. Uh, uh, from an pro Italian project called Canal. It's uh, old. I think this album came out back in like 2005. The album's called Speech from the Shadows, and uh, it's a really great album. Just real dense, dark, ambient, droning kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, what do you think about this album so far? This is what wasn't one I really had lined up, but what do you think about this so far? I mean, it's it's been just sort of background noise. I yeah, mean, but that's what dark sounds, ambient is sometimes too. Right, yeah. you know, and it sounds like you know something that I would hear in a, in a movie or something. Yeah. The cult of Noctilucan Noct is rising, says Forest of Frogs. <laughs> He's right. Good. So, all right. So, anyway, this album I'm going to play for Kara. You've probably overheard it before because I played it a lot. It's one of my all time favorite albums. It's uh, North Haunts, The Ominous Silence. Does that sound familiar? No. Oh, good. So, <laughs> this is one of my all time favorite albums. It came out back in, I believe, 2001 on Fluttering Dragon Records. Um, the version I have is a re-release that came out a few years ago in Cyclic Law. Um, it's pretty much the same album, plus a bonus track and different packaging. But all right, we're gonna put that album on right now. It's it's a classic in my opinion and one of the best ever. So are you guys having all like a really awesome night tonight or day or? Morning. Yeah. I have no idea where all of you are located. So That's what's going on? Yeah. You know. Let us know what you're drinking too, if you're. Yeah. Are you deal. drinking anything? Some of you, it might be morning for you. Some might be like having coffee or something. Yeah.
So this is North Haunts, the ominous silence. Alright, so so far there's like nature sounds and shit. One of the big parts of North Haunt, yes. I mean, I'm pretty cool with that. Yeah. Like thunderstorms and birds and shit. Yeah. That's the huge part of the North Haunt sound, uh, for those of you that haven't heard, is field recordings. And uh, for those of you that don't know, North Haunt is the project of Harlif Langhaus. I love that name, by the way. Uh, I talked about this album in the second episode of the Inner Sanctum, and you guys know that I'm totally just in love with this album. It's one of my all-time favorites, and uh, I also mentioned in an episode that I, when I was doing my graphic design project back in 2000, I included music from North Haunt in the final project that I did. So, just to you know, always kind of reaffirm the fact of what a nerd I am about dark ambient music and how long I've been into this stuff, I guess, or whatever. So, all right. So, we got to ask that question. Doing good. What are we listening now? We are listening to North Haunt's The Ominous Silence. So, yes. Oh, bass. So, here's a kind of look at the packaging. This is the Cyclic Law reissue, as I mentioned. And uh, I know it, I don't know if it's backwards in the stream that you're seeing right now. I know once this was online later, it was normal, so it's kind of weird. But, uh, so the album comes with these, uh, Cards with all the with Harlif's uh, photography. Some of this is, I think, uh, you know, photos that were used in the original album. Some of them are new too. This makes me feel like someone's gonna pop out of the closet and just start fucking axe murdering us any minute. They are. I didn't tell you about that part. I listen to way too much true crime podcast. <laughs> Icicles, yes. Now that sounds like some kid learning how to play the piano or something. <laughs> a thunderstorm yeah. and now there's like a creep coming out of like the closet behind the piano yeah holy shit kid you gotta get out of there man yeah you don't want to play the, key the keyboard in the like, piano like just forget it like don't even like it's fine you don't even need to learn how to play the piano like get out of there yeah um fuck it I wouldn't want to play the piano in a <laughs> rainstorm, personally. I mean, uh, there's the whole, you know, ruining your keyboard thing and then uh, being soaked. And All right. North on Savarts and Tapophobia, Norwegian Dark Ambient. You, sir, are correct. Those are some of my favorites and have been some of my favorites for quite a while now. And, uh, what I actually really like about this film is that it, uh... It has something of a more melodic edge at times uh, in comparison to some dark ambient. Oh my god, this part totally reminds me of like the really dramatic scenes in Law and Order. Law and Order? Fuck <laughs> yes! <laughs> what? Oh come on! Never watched Law and Order? Apparently not. I don't remember that scene anyway. Or like the X Files. Any of those like shows from like the 90s. Like the real dramatic scenes would have like these really simple like synths. Lines playing the background. Sure. You know what I'm talking right, right. about. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing about dark ambient music. It doesn't necessarily uh, rely on, you know, uh, cr you know, stunning musicianship. It's always about the atmosphere. You know, I mean, if the atmosphere is there. Well, right. You know, and for me personally, that's key. Like, I don't necessarily, I don't, I, I was, I can never, like, it doesn't matter what kind of music you're talking about. Like, I don't need complex guitar solos or some shit like that. It's just, for me, it's always been about atmosphere and what I feel when I listen to music. I don't know, so. and I, I appreciate that 100%, yeah. but I don't know, I guess, like, I want, sometimes I just want more than that. Right, and that makes sense, yeah. But I guess that's just because of my own personal that's your own style background. and yeah. background, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Especially coming from... Right, so you, yeah, I mean, you have the heavy... Symphonic metal band. Yeah, you have that background. It's very intricate and technical. The 
did you listen to Biosphere, also from Norway? You know, Biosphere is one of those projects that I've known about forever and I've never really gotten around to checking out. I should probably do that one of these days. Um, I don't know, is it dark ambient or is it more just kind of like general, normal ambient, I guess, or whatever? I don't know. It's something i got to get back to one of these days. But yeah, I have heard that project a little bit back in the day, but never uh, bought any of the albums just yet. So. See, this part I yeah, yeah. Like, this is, like, super emotional and shit. Yeah, yeah. See, for me, when I first heard this... See, this is the part when the mom just found the kid's body when he was just trying to play the piano. Right, yeah. So and then the weirdo showed up and killed the poor kid when he was just trying to learn how to play the piano. Yeah. Like, just leave the kid alone, man. <laughs> and now his mom found his dead body. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck, yeah. No kidding. So... <laughs> So we got a dead kid that was just trying to play the piano in the rain. And then he got murdered by an axe murderer. Came out of the closet. Um, we've been drinking oh, a lot. Oh shit! He's back for the mom. He's back for the mom now. Dude. Dude. She's not gonna. She's gonna run upstairs instead of out the door. She, yeah, that's how these things go, right? Yeah. Like why? Why? Yeah, I don't know. But uh. It's not gonna end well. Someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna be sad. <laughs> I, I, I love this film. I don't care. All right, questions. Do the Danes have a lot of dark gambit musicians like the Norwegians and the Swedes do? I don't know of any Danish dark gambit musicians. Um. I don't know. I feel like I don't fall backwards in my chair here. Please don't. I could be mistaken, but I think the project Cave or Cobb that did this split with Top of Capophobia recently, I feel like that project might have been Danish. But I'm well, let me see it. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't, well, I don't. you know that there's Google, right? Well, there is Google, yeah, but, you know. Live in Alaska. I suppose this is pretty. Um, I wasn't expecting a question. Pretty like, limited information. Yeah, there's on very this little in there. I, I, I feel like that project, Cave or Cobb or Hubbard's pronounced, I feel like that project was uh, from Denmark. But I could be mistaken. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, yes. Acoustic guitar. Yes. And that's, uh, well, actually, uh, the, right, we were just looking at Tapophobia. That's uh, Catel Soriker. He was in this band uh, before he went solo with Tapophobia, and he added the, uh, the acoustic guitar in this uh, first, well, the first two in our fun albums. But I, I in particular, love his work on uh, the first album. It's quite beautiful and really has a wonderful atmosphere to the record. Yeah. I mean, I really like this intro so far. Yeah. It's like a 12 minute intro. <laughs> Is that really an intro, then? No, it's not. It's the first song. I know the Deans like Dark Ambient a lot by the analytics of my YouTube channel. Could be. I gotta. I guess I gotta explore, uh, you know, the, the Danish scene, see what's out there, and uh, definitely get my music, my own personal music, out to Denmark, if that's the case. Uh, I had no idea. So, yeah. Good to know. I'll have to you know, check that out, yeah. You have homework. I have homework to do, yeah, no doubt. So, so, so please remind me, because yeah. I'm probably not going to remember the names of anything you tell me tonight, yeah. but who is this? Northwand. Oh, yeah. The Ominous Silence is the name of the album. One of my all-time favorites. Like, it, I really, and I, this is probably just because I'm twisted and demented, and that, like, everything I think about is, like, true crime, and, like, shit like that so like this whole so far like i'm just getting like a true crime story like is playing out in my head as i'm listening to this so yeah like now like the mom escaped and now she's like trying to get answers about what happened to her child that was murdered by a crazy man while he was just trying to learn how to play the piano like what the fuck you guys yeah. I, I feel like you should be collaborating more story-wise on my albums if this is coming to you so naturally. Like, what <laughs> well, the I mean, hell? What a, are we doing here? I am a songwriter. You are Hello. a songwriter, yeah, it's true. 
Maybe I need to bring you up here more often. <laughs> Like, so, this is, like, for all of you people out there watching, I don't know how many people are watching, but, like, eight currently. legit, like, this is the weird shit that we talk about. Yeah, this is. No one's even watching, so this right. is pretty organic. You're, this is a pretty, yeah, <laughs> organic look in our lives. Like, we're sitting there eating eggs in the morning. We're like, so, you heard about this serial killer and shit like that? So it's pretty awesome. I don't know if some couples talk about serial killers necessarily. We do. We do. Yeah, so. It's fine. We're, it's fine. We're uh, we're just like uh, peas and carrots and shit. So, yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I hear Forrest Gump in my head. You should. Peas and Jenny's like peas and yeah. carrots. You're right. So uh, yeah, this is uh, North on Salmon and Silence. Yeah, good record. And, uh, I mean, I actually kind of like yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I mean, all joking aside, I mean that one part legit did make me think about Law and Order. Okay. But, I guess you have to show me that later. I'm not familiar with that, that uh, asylum bit or whatever from it. But I mean, in general, like I could listen to this. I could, I could play this. Like, I mean, this legit would be pretty good to listen to at work on some days. Like, especially when I'm working on something where I can't really be paying attention to what I'm listening to. Yeah. Like, because I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm at work. A lot of true crime podcasts. Like I said, I'm really a fucking twisted, and I like true crime. <laughs> but anyway. So sometimes, like when I'm working on something that requires a lot of mental power, I have to listen to something that's not gonna require my attention. This would be something that would be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean that's what I've always kind of told people is you know there's a lot of uses for dark ambient. It, it's more like sometimes it's more practical than just you know using it for you know like normal. I guess, or whatever, you know, like, I well, what's a normal reason? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know, like, you know, some people just listen to music, I, I don't know why some people listen to music, I've always listened to music, but some people, you know, they don't necessarily listen to music too much. <laughs> Support your local serial killer. Uh, well, we have a lot of those in Wisconsin. Yeah, we do. I'm not sure I want to really support them, because then they might come and kill me. Yeah, we well, already got the bone guy on our trail, so. But... <laughs> so, I mean... I support them in a sort of sidelines kind of way for entertainment purposes. I'm a fucked up person. I'm oh, sorry. here we go. Last demo of Tapophobia inspired by Twin Peaks. I want to know, are you a fan of Twin Peaks or Battle of music? That's the Angelo, the guy that goes music. Um, so, funny story. We, we just, just started watching Twin Peaks a few weeks ago. Yeah. So... Okay, so I've known about Twin Peaks since when it... Oh, uh, me too. Long time. I mean, it, it first premiered back in 1990. It's like a cult thing. You know? I was aware of it way back then, but I guess I just... I, I was only nine years old when it first premiered, so I, I wasn't into that kind of thing. It. Yeah. And then I think it was probably back in the early 2000s. I remember my manager at my job was like... He was telling me his wife was like an obsessive fan. And I was like, yeah? And I, was, and I still didn't check it out back then. And then kind of in recent years, it became... Like this hipster thing to really like Twin Peaks. I don't know. I mean, that's what it seems like anyway. So I, I decided to finally check it out. We did about two weeks ago. And so far, we're enjoying it, I think. I mean, it, it took a little bit to get into it. Like the first couple episodes, we basically were just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like the whole time. But then once you get into like maybe the third or fourth like episode of the first season, like then you was sort of like, you kind of like fell, everything sort of fell into place. And yeah. then you were like, okay. I think I get what the fuck is happening now. Now we actually just watched the first episode of the second season last night, so yeah. we're we're getting through it. But yeah. yeah. But anyway, to comment on the music, I think that's what. Yeah. The I of that I mean, I like some of the music. Um, I kind of felt like there wasn't really that many songs in the actual. It's a little repetitive. It's a little repetitive, but I know there is kind of the there is one that kind of means song. It's got a real dark ambient kind of vibe to it. Yeah. But I think it works. Yeah, it definitely works, yeah. yeah. I mean, I for me personally, as somebody who doesn't consider themselves a dark ambient aficionado, I personally would prefer more variety yeah. in the music in the background. But at the same time, it works yeah. for what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, we're gonna keep watching, and uh, I think isn't there also a movie or something too? 
I don't. I, don't. I thought there was a movie they did some time ago too. I mean, your brother and your sister-in-law did a, a cosplay yeah. from Twin Peaks. Yeah, so they're really, man, man, I need to ask them more about it. <laughs> Obviously, they like it a lot. And they live in Portland, Portland, Oregon, which I think is somewhere where the show was filmed. It's, it's in the Northwest. It's so. Yeah, yeah. So. It's up in that area. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, Twin Peaks is all right. Music, it's okay. And I, I guess, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I guess, it's like, that stuff's pretty, you know, critically acclaimed, I guess, or whatever, but I don't know. Maybe I just, I'm not at first, like, Washington it. State. Washington State, so there you go. There I there we are. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, what, do you want my like final opinion? Wait, on wait. This? I gotta play this next song for you. This next song, I'm fairly certain you've heard me play before. So let's let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Oops. Not that one. I hope we're entertaining, guys. Song. I mean, I'm sort of an entertainer by trade and, well, my side job as a musician. Yeah, she knows how to talk on stage and all that stuff, so yeah. I'm normally singing, though. I'm not just sitting in a chair no, drinking no. beer. like the intro to an Agalock song. <laughs> thumbs up. All thumbs up. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, this is like really nice so far. I like this. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm in a traveling down a river to some undetermined destination. You can see that. I'm, I have a very vivid imagination, Clearly, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I always, this song's got a real, like, kind of strong, kind of real melancholy vibe to it. I like it, but, uh, it's still kind of relaxing and peaceful, too. Oh, shit. But then, here's, oh my here's God. down to the abyss. You guys, there's someone in the fucking woods yeah. watching me go down the river in my canoe. You guys, this is not bode well. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Oh, a true classic. Wait for it, though. I think we got to the part that he was talking about. Guys, I don't think I'm going to make it up. I just came here for like a nice, peaceful, like, rock down the goddamn river. God damn it, I should have known better. Yeah, I should have. I've watched Not True Crime, but I should have known better. Yeah. Trust no one, everybody. Trust no one. So, I've moved on to, uh, lost my keys here. I've moved on to Darker Horizons, and I'm good in drinking a good old-fashioned Guinness now. You know what? I'm turning off that oppressive light, too. I, I think that's fine. I think this light is plenty bright. Yeah. And I like not being blinded. Yeah. So, we got Guinness now. Well, whatever. You guys know what Guinness looks like. So, I'm drinking Guinness now. Kara's still working her uh, yum yum. I'm probably going to need another one. I'll run downstairs and we'll get, I'll get you one in case, uh, as long as you're able to entertain the crowd for like a good two minutes. I mean, <laughs> I think so. So, so that, this is Nora Fonz, the Ominous Silence, in case you're just joining us, and, uh, so far, Kira seems like she really likes it. So it's good. I like it. It's making me think that bad things are going to happen. I feel like that's just sort of what's supposed to happen when you listen to Dark Ambient. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's not happy music necessarily, you know. That's why it's uh, that's why it's dark. Oh shit! It got quiet. Does that mean I died? You died, definitely. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this just I, this must just be my ghost here, talking to these people right mm -hmm. now. I believe so. So. Uh, yeah. 
You guys already know how I feel about this album, so uh, I mean, if you don't go back to episode two of the Inner Sanctum, then we can uh, we can definitely revisit my thoughts on that. But I love this album. I will always love this album, and uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Really. Oh my God, I think I was just unconscious, and now he's dragging my body to a cave in the woods. Oh my God, it's getting really grim. <laughs> I have problems. <laughs> uh, how often do you? murder like this is this is alarming actually i i don't think about murdering people i think about people murdering other people like yeah. i don't want to kill anybody i like people being alive especially you right, right. Um, i don't want to get murdered either that would hurt i'm not into that also i don't want to go to prison i don't think i would do well in prison like legit i would not do well in prison yeah. so because i don't like people telling me what to do so we got 10 people currently watching why don't you guys tell us where you're all from real quick? Yeah, where are you guys from? I want to know. Yeah. So I know some of you. Like, I know uh, Arthur. I know you're from the UK. I remember. I believe those from the UK. You told me. Of course, the frogs. I know where you're from. Where is he from? Max, California. Maximum. Yeah. He's from California. California has some really good beer. In I'm into supernatural horrors such as Lovecraft. All right, Lovecraft. Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Dude, Supernatural Horror and Lovecraft is some good ass shit. Yeah. Would be great when you play something on your keyboard to us. Ha 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 ha. I thought about doing some sort of like uh, improv live show someday, so. He said that was a joke. Oh, it was a joke? Well, never mind then, I won't do it. <laughs> I mean, if you really thought about it, you can do I had it. thought about it, but, you know, <laughs> maybe we'll get back to that okay. someday. Maybe he wasn't joking. He only said that because he didn't want to pressure you. Yeah. And, well, he or she. I don't know if I don't know. he or she. Translucent. But, <laughs> like, I've actually been trying to, like, slowly convince him to, like, do live stuff. Yeah. Because, actually, the band that I'm in currently, our guitarist, whose name is Joe as well, um, has made like or hinted around at like asking him to come and do like shows with us. Yeah. But this guy doesn't want to do it. Uh, it's stage fright and <laughs> all that kind of thing. But maybe I'll just like have to you know just figure it out one day and do it. Yeah. It would be great, really. Yeah. So maybe a live uh, improv dark ambient session someday. Um. Anyway. Why don't we move on to another album? Yeah, we have somebody from the UK in here too. Yes. In the southwest of the UK. Arthur Goodness Sack. Cheers to you in the UK, Arthur. Yes. I've been to the UK and it was fun and I drank a lot of beer. I uh I went to Bloodstock open air back in 2010. Um, that was a good time, yeah. And I also would really love to visit the Northwest, so cheers to Seattle as well, I see. Yeah. Translucent is from there. Yes. So, uh, anyone else you want to tell us where you're from, go ahead. Anyway, but we're going to move on to the next album. Carol like The Ominous Silence by Northland. I love The Ominous Silence by Northland. It made me think about serial killers, <laughs> and that's like totally my boat, so. Right on. Totally in my wheelhouse. Black Metal, Dark Ambient Archive said it would be great, really. So, I mean, you really should just get over your stage fright. I really should. Not to Lucent. Oh, please. I mean, I try to inspire him every day, but it's just not working. Yeah. So the first person that guesses uh, what elm this is gets a free beer. <laughs> oh my god. It's a digital beer though. So the sounds um Ooh. Oh what's that? This reminds me of like that Pure Moods CD that came out like back in the nineties. Do you remember that? No. It was like a CD that got sold on the TV. It was like an infomercial. And that like weird like flute thing that okay. played at the beginning. I swear to god I've heard that in that pure Moods. Was Enya on that? Yes! <laughs> 
<laughs> totally, Enya totally was on the pure mood. Well, all right, yeah. That sounds about right. Or what's that? What was that other band? That new age band that was really. You better fun? not be making fun of Enya. I'm I not like Enya. making fun of Enya. I'll kill you. Um. Yeah. So, who else was on? Enigma is out there. Enigma. Yeah, they were on that too. There's yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. I think I used to actually have one of those because there was like you know kind of like jock jams how there was like numerous compilations. Volumes. Yeah, yeah. Like there was like several volumes of Pure Moods too. Okay. I think I got one of them for Christmas one year. Somebody just said, sounds like Enigma. <laughs> it's not Enigma, I swear. See, I told you, I'm not the only one who thought it. Thank you for the validation. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else have any guesses? This, this is a legit dark ambient classic with some, I guess, some lighter uh, New Age tones to it. I've been validated. You have been. Ha ha ha, I knew it. Alright, well, to, to, it's uh, Rosin de Itre, actually. What? Say that again? Rosin de Itre. Do you pronounce these things properly? Yes. It's enthralled by the winds of loneliness. Is this French? Uh, the project is Swedish, but the word is, uh, French, yeah. Rosin de Itri needs, like, reason to be, I guess, basically. Okay. Yeah. They use text that's, like, very, like... Impossible to read? Well, no, not impossible to read, but, like, it looks very, like, old text, like... Right. Something you would expect from, like, the 13 or 1400s. Yeah. Well... Like, in Latin or some shit. Yeah. So, I guess a lot of you guys that have been following Dark Yannick music for a long time uh, probably know Rosin de Itri. It's the uh, legendary long-running project from uh, Peter, Han uh, Peter Anderson from Luxholm, Sweden. And uh, he's, of course, uh, you know, one of the first uh, early artists signed to Dark Yann uh, si I'm sorry, signed to Cold Meat Industry back in the early 90s. And, it's got a slew of legendary albums, and it's really his work that kind of really, uh, you know, initially kind of really defined the dark ambient sound back in the early 90s and really kind of, you know, kind of put it on the map. And uh, this is an album I've owned for several years. I've always enjoyed it. It's a great record. This is one of the, uh, I think, one of the original presses on Coleman Industry. It's probably been repressed a few times, but uh, this first press is actually pretty cool because it comes in this uh, digipack. And, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty simple digipack, I guess, but, uh, yeah. and then it's got this, uh, poster, and I'm pretty sure other editions of it don't have this poster in it. I mean, it's not really, like, the most exciting poster by any means, it's just like, uh, I want to see it. It's just like, like a it's just a cathedral. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure other versions of it don't have that. Here's the other side of it. Some pretty cool stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I got, I have no idea how many years I've owned this record. Probably at least 18 years I've owned this record. I, I think. wish we could translate because End of the World commented, but it's in. Oh my god, it it's in like Cyrillic. It's, yeah, it's Russian or something. Yeah. I can't, it doesn't give me the option to translate it. No. Oh well. End of the world, I really do want to know what you're saying. We'll have to figure that out later. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's great artwork. I mean, I've always loved the artwork that uh, Peter Anders, uh, you know, or Cold Me Industry put into the records of Rosin to H Street. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, this is legit, like, the pure food. Of it definitely could have fit into some, it definitely has something of a new age vibe to it, but it definitely does. it's definitely darker because like like Enigma well, or it has more of like a like in the back like you have like that lighter sort of new age kind of sound in the front but in the back there's like that low rumbling yeah. like sort of foreboding sort of sound kind of 
layered and behind like the lighter new agey sound. Yeah, for sure. That's the best way. To that is a good way to put it because uh, I mean most new age stuff is like. It's more like. It's it's much well, more it's happy more, sounding. Well, I think. It's in, a lot of those songs are in a major key. Yeah. Whereas this is in a minor key, so it has more of like that sort of sad, depressed, um, forlorn kind of sound. Oh, yeah, Arthur, you should definitely look into some more Rosin Dietrich records. I mean, P I mean, Peter's evolved a lot over the years. I mean, this record, I think, is from like 1994, one of his early efforts, so... It sounds like a spirit flute to me. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and people that know, don't know much about Peter Anderson, he's had, like, since, like, 1990, he's had something like... 15 or 16 different, like, elect, like kind of like experimental electronic kind of based projects. He's had various, like, dark ambient projects. He's had some, like, harsh noise projects, some more, like, hard driven industrial projects, and all kinds of shit like that. He, I mean, he's been an incredibly prolific composer over the past you know, 20 some odd years, you know, and, for, and he's also become well known as good like studio engineer and stuff like that a guy for mastering and stuff like that so pretty legendary guy in the scene and uh he started out really young I, i'm guessing he was probably in his late teens when he first started composing music and uh yeah. I mean, this is yeah, cool. Yeah. I literally have nothing to make fun of no. this. No, it's, it's like, I, I really like it, and it's... I like the folk instruments, yeah. and then sort of like the more foreboding in the background. It sounds cool. I would listen to this. Yeah, yeah. and you should. <laughs> it's right here behind you. You just have to come to my van cave and put on. you guys have seen this, right? Like, it's very, like... I mean, some of my own CDs are mixed in here, and I don't even listen to those because I come up and I look at the wall of CDs, and I'm like, this is just too much. Yeah. I'm going to just listen on Spotify. Right. And <laughs> this is actually a, a daily uh, thing for me before I go to work, because I have like a 25-minute drive to work every day, so I, I have to have CDs with me. Otherwise, if I have to listen to radio, I'm going to fucking freak out. So I have to have, a, at least I usually bring two CDs with me every day. Not to say that I'll go through them necessarily, but I want to make sure I have them. And I'll usually sit in front of this CD wall for at least five minutes every morning. Hold or... on, I hear strings. There are strings. I like that. I come from a background of classically, I actually am sort of classically trained singer. My, my choir director when I was in high school was actually pretty hardcore and he made us learn basic music theory and things like stuff that you wouldn't even learn unless you were like going to school in college for a music performance or education which I did for a year but he made us learn all that stuff in high school and so we did a lot of like master works and things like that so anything with like strings or sort of like a like symphony sort of sound to it I just automatically I'm inclined to, like, my ears just, like, perk up when I hear it. Because I'm yeah. like, ooh, what is this? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I have no, I forgot <laughs> what I was we saying. We were talking about CDs. Oh, yeah, so, it's always a struggle to try and figure out what the hell I'm going to listen to on my way to work and other errands i got to run each day. Um, but I, I always like to read before I go to bed, so now I'm just listening to all my dark ambient CDs from... A to Z. Everything's perfectly alphab alphabetized. So I'm just listening to all my dark gaming CDs from, you know, A to Z. It's going to take a few months, years, or maybe to get through everything, but, so yeah. So we have some more new comments. One says, sounds like flute from Mortis, everyone leaves. I can't remember that song. Man. And Rosante, whatever, however you want to Rosante, Rosante, the H3. Is on top with less more and etc. I don't know what that means. Well, Lost Mart is another dark ambient project, but yeah. I, mean, I, don't know. I think he's saying that he, they hold it highly along with Lost Mart. Yeah, okay. I hate the radio ambient is the way to go. I don't know what that means. Too many fave artists to mention. That's true. Yeah, there's a lot of really, really great dark ambient artists out there. Well, I mean, I like this. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, smell the rain. Yeah, that was when Mortis went all like dark wave and shit. Yeah. I used to own that album. I bought it back when it first came out because I was a big fan. I'm out of beer, so I'm gonna go. She's gonna go another grab another one. beer. All right, she'll be right back. I'm just gonna sit here and talk. And I don't know how this camera. I don't, I'm not sure if I like the way this is going because this is kind of uh, falling over all the place. I'm gonna kind of try and adjust this while she's gone. All right, bear with me, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about this. I just it's driving me crazy looking at this thing and seeing it all like just pointing at the ground. by the winds of loneliness. I first heard this album, I believe, in the early 2000s. I, uh, I think this was the first Ross Dietry on my wants, in fact. And, uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, high price and rare, because, you know, this original edition is probably out of print, so I know I bought this for, like, $8 off of eBay back then, so pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it's got the poster and everything. It looks cool. You know, it's a, it's a cool album. It's a bit different from most, you know, dark yambics. It's a little more musical, and it has sort of this uh, cathedral kind of effect to it, and, you know, there's more real instrumentation, I guess, too. But it's, uh, it's a great record. It's one I've always really enjoyed a lot, and uh, I mean, I've enjoyed, you know, really everything Rosin and has released over the years. But, uh, yeah. So, looks like we got 10 people watching right now. Uh, the thing is, if, if you guys are just, you know, joining us, let me know where you're from. It's always kind of interesting to see where you guys are tuning in from. And, uh, yeah. Um, we are, me and Kara are from Wisconsin, USA. Yeah, I mean, it is about, uh, it's almost 7 o'clock here. I don't know what time it is over by you guys. So, yeah, you know, we're, uh. Having a good time. We've been drinking all day, and oh wow, it's the early, uh, early afternoon anyway. The black metal dark ambient archive from Serbia. No kidding. Wow, that's cool. It's so cool to be able to connect from, with people, you know, so far away in this, you know, real time interactive way. That's uh, it's weird because I remember uh, when I like in the mid '90s, my dad took us to. Uh, down to Florida to Disney's Epcot, and there was this this ride called like I think it was called Planet Earth or Spaceship Earth or something like that. It was all about like technology, past and current and future. And like back in 1995, they showed like videos of like or they like, they had like you know like mannequins set up in front of like screens talking like these live real time kind of things. And I was like, wow, that's that's gonna be so cool in the future if we actually have that. And here we are, like, 20-some years later, and we actually have this real-time video. It's really cool. Kira's back. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's 1.57 a.m. in Serbia. It's 1 a.m.-ish here over there in uh, the southwest of the U.K. All right. Hey, so. Serbia visiting his family right now. That's where he's from. Yeah. So cheers to Serbia. Yeah. What can I Um, thanks for staying up late with us, guys. Um, that's really awesome, you know. Um, I mean, if uh, there was a show going on overseas, I'd probably just, I'd, I'd probably accidentally fall asleep because that's the way I am. <laughs> it's true, you guys. It's true. I fall asleep during movies all the time and stuff, so. Yeah. Cheers. All right. So, yeah. So, this is Rosin Dietrich's uh, Draw by the Winds of Loneliness. Kara's enjoyed this one as well, so we're two for two. We're doing good, actually. Yeah, I'm digging it. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, the first one made me think about serial killers. This one, like, legit, like, just chill. Yeah. But it's got more mu more musically sounding, too. It's got more instrumentation. And... It's definitely more intricate. Yeah. Um, more technical. Yeah. yeah. No. And then, oh, 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 yeah. See, that... 
I was waiting that, for that I fucking love. Yeah. In, in college, actually, when I was a uh, music performance and, and education major for the short period of time that I was, I actually did a, like, a monk chant song for one of our concerts that we did. So I fucking love that shit. Yeah. Any kind of monk chanting, bring it on, motherfuckers. I yeah. love that shit. So, yeah. The bells and, like, all of that shit. Like, it's funny because I'm not even a religious person. I'm not into that stuff. But, like... The sounds and like the music like around that like I just fucking love it yeah. like I know so many songs in religious texts like Latin and shit it's true she sings them all the time and it's so fucking beautiful yeah like music from like the renaissance and the medieval times is just amazing I love it so that part I fucking dig like that just draws me in immediately yeah um, something I've always wondered about this record is if Peter just like sampled it from a CD or if he like made a field recording of this live at like a cathedral or something like that. I don't know if that question's ever been asked him and I feel like I need to interview him someday and kind of find out the truth, like what, it really, what the whole story is there. Oh, Maximon said that he really likes throat singing. Dude, throat singing is a fucking amazing. There's those bands that I really love. They're actually from the States, and I'm having trouble rem remembering what the name of the band is now. It's a metal band. It's not dark ambient, but the lead vocalist does throat singing. And, like, the first time I heard them, I was like, holy shit, I don't even know who these people are, but I love them, and I want to go to all of their shows, and I want to buy all their shit. Yeah. Just because of the fact that their singer was a throat singer. That was that, like... Like Chinese or Thailandese band or something, right? Yes, Gregorian chant yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. It is just so beautiful. It just it pulls you in. It's just it's so soothing and it's just ugh. Yeah. You mix it with dark ambient and then you get even oh, it's really uh. <laughs> full body chills, yeah. guys. Yeah. So that's the first three songs on Rosin to Each Reason, Thralled by the Winds of Loneliness, and Carol likes it, so fuck yeah. Um, let's move on to something else, shall we? Alright, let's do let's it. Let's do it. Yeah, any, any kind of like like Gregorian chant or throat singing or any sort of like, you know, religious choir text. Like there's this black metal band out of Poland called Batushka that utilizes a lot of that kind of sound that I just fucking love. And I'm not really, I don't consider myself a huge black metal fan by any means, but it's that like that part of it that really draws me in and they really like they hit it hard in their music like yeah. it's it's very like very much a part of their entire identity and sound as a band and like i absolutely adore them because of that yeah. it sets them apart from other black metal bands for that reason alone it's yeah. fucking amazing yeah, what's the name of that album i can't remember the one where it's get, like all the song titles are like one two three four you know what i'm talking Batushka? Yeah. I don't know what the album's called, but... Like, even the imagery that they use is all very, like, Eastern Catholic. It's that, like, kind of like Russian really? Orthodox yes, kind of look or something. Yes, it yeah. totally is, and yeah. it's beautiful, and I just, I fucking love it. It's yeah. so good. So. so we've moved on to a new, new album now. Okay. Um, what is this? This is Atrium Carceres. Sai Shin Biyuan. Okay, now I've heard you talk about this yes, one. Yes, like this was a, a bajillion times. Right, so this was the first album I ever reviewed on the very first episode of the Inner Sanctum. This is one of my all-time favorite albums, and also a huge, huge influence on me. You don't say. No, you no, I don't say. Um, <laughs> I fucking love this album. I love like, you guys, I've legit heard the name of this album, like, probably a thousand yeah. plus times. But, so I bought this album, this album came out I think back in 
2003, and like, I, I mean, obviously I only been listening to Dark Kingdom for a few years at that point, but when I heard this, I was like, oh my god, like, it was so, like, cinematic and just over the top with, like, just, like, the elaborateness of everything put into it. It was so, it was like, you know, like, a horror movie, but you couldn't see it, basically. It was incredible. And, uh... I mean, still to this day, like, this album is just, like, I don't, like, I love Atrium Carcerae. I think every album Simon has created is really great, but this album is his uh, definite masterpiece. Yeah. And I remember uh, I first heard about this project because I was used to hang out on this uh, web forum back when, like, forums were still a thing back in the early 2000s. Forums are still a thing. So they're still a thing. And uh, it was for this, this, uh, this record label called Venless Records. I don't know why I started hanging out in this forum, but I started hanging out, and there's a lot of people in there that were into dark ambient music and uh, weird industrial experimental music. So I got in really well with them, and I someone posted a sample of this album, and I was like, oh, holy shit. And like, I instantly went to Coleman Industries' website and bought this album. I, it was just wow. So you guys were back to like me thinking about like we got a break in between there, but now, now this, this is making me, well, it's not so much true crime, but now I'm kind of like on a, like, holy shit, like a cult is trying to, like, summon Satan into yeah. our fucking living room right uh -huh. now. So, yeah. So yeah, I talked about this album on the first episode of The Inner Sanctum, and obviously you guys know I like this one quite a bit. Wish I could get this straight. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, have you guys heard this album? Always... See, I'm not the only one. Maximon says that he this always makes him think about rituals as well. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty legit then. If it's yeah. more than one of us thinking that, then... Yeah. Probably a pretty good hint this guy was going for, right? I well, mean, or we're both just really fucked up, like one or the other. Well, if I'm not, if I, <laughs> if I remember correctly, atrium carcerae is Latin and it means something like prison hell or something. That's Carcery. what it Yeah. Yeah. It means something like that. I, I, I don't know that word, but that does sound like carceration right. or something. Like yeah. That. I think, I don't think the Latin's necessarily correct, but I think what he wanted to be, if I remember correctly from any interviews, it was supposed to be in prison hell. And, uh, Sai Shin Biyuan is, uh, I think either a Korean or Japanese word, actually. Yeah, that, that definitely is very different than the Asian yeah. cursory. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I hear monstrous voices. You do? Oh, there are definitely monstrous yeah. voices. I'm pretty sure that, like, a Beezlebub is, like, over in the closet. Yes. Over there. He's right over so, there. Yeah. I mean, you might see us get dragged to hell any second. Yeah. So, so here's the front cover of this one. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Simon is the per is the strange character dressed up in the, the front cover. I think I'm not 100 sure, but I'm pretty sure he did all the photography and artwork for this album. So there's the back cover too. I tried to show this on the second, or that first version of the Inner Sanctum, but I was using a really shitty webcam back then and it didn't work out so well. So you get a better look at it right, in, right now then, I guess, right? And uh, yeah. so this real, you know, there's some text in there to kind of give you a little more insight into the, the world of Atrium Carcerae. And this is something Simon has continuously done throughout uh, all of the Atrium Carcerae uh, albums to kind of, you know, story going and you chuckling about over there. These people are laughing. Oh. About my funny commentary about getting dragged to hell by a diesel bomb. Oh. You know, sometimes you gotta get dragged. Hey Joe, do you wanna be be my diesel bud? Oh shit. Will you be my diesel bud? Yes, I will. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, old advertisement for Coldmade Industry in here. 
Um, lots of albums I really wish I would have bought back in the day because they're probably out of print and really fucking hard to get now. But, you know, you snooze, you lose and all that shit, so. So, yeah, we are listening to Atrium Cars for Sai Shin to you and. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've heard this, but. Yeah. I know this is probably gonna break your heart, but I really legit. This is pretty, like. For me, at least what I've heard so far, there's nothing about this that I would be able to, like, if you play this for me again, like, later, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's totally that. Like, to me, it seems very generic. Like, the other stuff, there was something about it that, like, for some reason, it, like, stuck with my head. But, like, this so far, I mean, it might change later, obviously, yeah, but there's... so far, like, there's nothing really identical. For me personally, when I first heard this, what really made it stood out was more like the voices and the field recordings, because that was still kind of a new thing at the time. Okay, I mean, that's so, fair. So that's I what mean, kind of always made me stood out for this me. This is definitely like someone, so, the opinion of somebody who doesn't listen to right. their ambient radio. So I'm going to play this, the first song I heard from Major and Cars, right? And this is the song that first made me go like, holy fuck, okay, this is something yeah. different. Let me hear that. Yeah, yeah. This is the song I heard, like I was talking about earlier, someone had posted on a, a message form and I heard it and I was like, holy shit, like this is really different and cool. Like it didn't sound like dark, you know, maybe it was more like a dark soundtrack thing. Um, Just all these like um, yeah. strange demonic like backward, uh, backwards vocals and shit. Diesel bulbs here, for sure. Yeah. Sixty-nine minutes already. Wow. Right. Can you guys see it already? Still. Demons. We did. We sure as hell did. We definitely did, and we're probably gonna die right in front of you guys. I'm very sorry that my blood is going to stay with you for the rest of your life. But so, it's been nice knowing you sort of through the internet. So we're sorry about any technical difficulties. I haven't exactly figured this all out yet. I mean, it's literally just like press like I go to the YouTube app and I press go live and I, I put a title in and it's like alright we're live and that's about it I can't really figure any other settings I guess and I think it's fixed yeah I think we're okay now it just was uh the phone came unplugged and it 
they didn't like that. So. The bullet hiccup, yeah. So I think we're on perfect. Oh. Well, I don't know. Well, hopefully it's okay, so. Just like give us confirmation. Can you see us okay? Just having a little hiccup in the internet. I don't know. Still pretty choppy. See, this happened last time when I first started the video. I don't really know why. What the catalyst is for doing this. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it's like loading on. I don't know. It's like. Said did World War II begin? <laughs> or World War III, I'm sorry. World War II already World happened! War II happened a long time ago. You guys are getting a close-up of my nose. And my fingers. Where, why is that happening? What, wait, where, what? Yeah. 
Like that happens to me a lot when a song happens where there's no structure. Now, it doesn't have to be a, a rigid structure, like where it's like verse, chorus, verse, chorus every time. I've written songs which are not like traditional structure myself. And I appreciate when somebody can go outside the bounds of normalcy in terms of music. But this song, I think I'm able to like, my brain just like clicks into it better because it had like, at least on that first part, it had a like a steady beat. Yeah. It does. It's a little more subdued, but like there's a beat in the background kind of keeping time. So that by itself creates structure. <laughs> I really appreciate it because like it has sort of like a I don't know in my head and I'll show so like in my head like I was imagining that like a scene in a movie with like the fucking like ass comes in and starts kicking everybody's ass and like like that entrance scene you know what I mean like where he walks in holding his shotgun and like his fucking swords sticking out in the back and he's got his like body armor and shit on I think I know maybe. <laughs> he like bl blows the door with his shotgun and the door goes. Oh, see, yeah. This... And then, like, he starts kicking everyone's ass. Like, that's what I saw. That's in what my you head. saw in your head with that song. Yeah. It's like, Judge Dredd shit or yes! some, some, something weird like that. <laughs> John Wick. John Wick. John Wick. Yeah, that's John Wick. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so. The video quality isn't very good, and I don't know what the hell I can do about that, but hopefully you guys are still here. So, let me just get through this song, and then we're gonna go on to something else. Sounds good to me. So, we have the piano going now. Which I, I tinker a little bit. Yeah. You like the tinker? <laughs> I like this. I mean, I love this whole album, so I got nothing bad to say. You got only good things. Translucent says, I guess I prefer less structure in my dark ambient. Usually no beat is my preference. Hey, I am by no means a person who, like, really has any clue. And I'm definitely not trying to tell anybody what to do. Hey. You do you, man. That is awesome. And cheers to you for marching to the beat of your own dark ambient. What would be some dark ambient? I mean, if you think about more like, I guess like traditional kind of what I would call like straightforward dark ambient, you could like list bands like Catmar Height, uh, Lost Lord, uh, that band we were hoping to show with up Canal, they're a good example. Uh, uh, Malm's another good one, a Norwegian project. I mean, a lot, a lot of dark ambient kind of main, kind of has more of that traditional kind of just cavernous kind of real dark droney soundtrackish kind of vibe. And you know, obviously a project like we're listening right now, Atrium Carcer has more of a cinematic sound, so it definitely uh, stands off in the pack. I think so for sure. More structure and stuff like that. So, yeah. I think for me, just to just to comment a little further on what I was saying before, yeah. it's just it's not that I dislike music that doesn't have structure. Structure. It's just more that background where structure is definitely like prevalent, yeah. and so my ear just picks up on that more, and I grab it. something that I would use more for this this thing that I really am into is called black yoga um, yeah. and it's basically this person Sophia, created a, a yoga class for people that 
didn't want to fucking go into yoga class and listen to like the cliche bullshit yoga music that you often hear, like new age shit that you would expect to hear in a yoga studio. So they like created their own fucking music using this, like they have a band that basically did like a drone ambient music. Like they created, they actually went into the recording studio. Yeah, that. That one. They went into the recording studio and created this entire record specifically for this this black yoga studio in Philadelphia, and it's fucking great. And I used to be in a, an experimental doom band, so like I'm definitely not a stranger to like to weirdness and yeah. like drone and ambience. But even then, like doom metal, for example, definitely has more structure than this. So I'm not. Stranger to it, I definitely appreciate get into certain types of drone and ambience. Um, if you guys haven't heard of the black yoga and you like are into fitness and but want something a little different, definitely go out and check that out. They do have a website and everything, so that you can just buy the CD itself. It's super fucking cool. A few tracks on there that give me full body chills. It's really yeah, it's fucking good. good. I should. Very bottles of hell for the next one. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Can't wait. Oh shit, I got to the vinyl. My beetle bud now. Uh, maximum 
has asked, uh, what's the name of this again? It was lagging a bit. Oh, so what is the name of this album again? It's it's in it's in Latin again, so it's kind of hard to remember. Um, Mysterium e Vigilante Biathon. Let me show that to the camera. And um, um, I'm pretty sure Satan is in my house. This was released on Noctavag. Live? We're live. No, oh, it's fine. Otherwise, I don't know why this live videos are so stressful for this. Shit. So there's the back cover. All right, I think we're caught on. So do that again, is. Okay. So this is the uh, the Stingles Leviathan by. Corona, Barathre, and Emiya splits. 
Mysterium. Okay, so even when I went downstairs, like my whole house is rumbling, <laughs> like shaking from the base on this record. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little alarming. Um, like it's this kind of shit that makes me make the jokes about how like I live in a haunted house. Yeah. Which I legit I tell people. more than five seconds. Alright. I think we're back. I think we're good. At least for a little while anyway. <laughs> oh, you're back kind of. Yeah, kind of. Alright. We've lost, okay, we're down to four people now. <laughs> oh, Master Guard, before we lose, cheers to you, mate. From yeah, Sweden. Sweden. Oh, man. quickly do one more. Yeah, before we be like legit lose. This is getting pretty long anyway, so. <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of expected this to happen. Yeah. We, I mean, this is us this we're is, talking about. Once she gets me going, once I get going and stuff, I just nerd on, keep talking about it. This happens all the time at the breakfast table and stuff like that. It's true, it does. So, we're going to move on to something else. It's, uh. This is cool. Um, I had a bad experience with that record label recently, and 
Yeah, I don't really want to talk about it other than uh, other than uh, I, I all I can say is I wouldn't support that label. That's all I'm really gonna say about that. Um, there's also some things I know about uh, the RFL guy. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna go there. I don't want to, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna talk. Why does it keep happening? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, but, I mean, I, it was unforeseen, I guess. I didn't think it would have an effect, but something I'm gonna have to take into consideration for future episodes. One more album. It's not really dark ambient. It's, uh, well, it's Dungeon Synth, actually. Oh, God. Oh, God. Still entertaining you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the tech are probably making this very disjointed and difficult to watch. But we appreciate you guys for that. We got eight people watching, so we're doing good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, so we got uh we got an accordion. What the hell? I shared the stage with a band that played an accordion once. Yeah. Everyone thought they were going to be so super dumb, and then they were like, Holy shit, that band was amazing! <laughs> Mortis will go on U.S. tour this spring. Will you go to visit that? Well, the closest he's coming is Chicago. Of and course. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go. I still gotta check to see if there's any tickets left and what day of the week it kind of falls in. That's all kind of a deciding factor, and it's when and when are they coming? What time of the year? Uh, I felt like it was in April or something like that. Yeah. So. Well, you probably should figure that out. I should probably figure that out soon. I'm definitely pretty tempted to go to that. I'd like to go to that. Yeah. So we moved on to something completely different. We're into the dungeon synth realms now. I have a history. <laughs> I'm making fun of Joe for listening to this. Yeah, she does. True story. <laughs> because it's like classical music, but like a super like down version of it. And that kind of bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it sounds like old Super Nintendo music, though. I mean, yeah, but... Like, this is better than some of the stuff you've played for me, though. Like, yeah. legitimately. Like, you've played some stuff where I've been like, what the fuck? Does, like, a ten-year-old make this record? Yeah, that could, that could be. Sometimes it's very lo-fi. That's true. Um, well, anyway, this is a project called Twa Nu Fuen. It's a project from Australia. It's been, uh, going for quite a while. I think since, like, the late 90s, and, uh, this is the more one of his, his newer albums called uh, Color Bean I Bin Color Bin. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, oh, there's the back cover. This is, I mean, this is total, you know, shit that's influenced by like epic fantasy soundtracks and definitely Mortis and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, like I hope you know that I've been just like doing weird dances. When I'm sure I, I'm sure you have, yeah. <laughs> so there's the back of the insert. Uh, it's an Aust Australian project and. You know, it's been the project's been going a long time, and that's notable because I feel like it's easy to die in Australia with all the horrible insects and other animals there that can kill you instantaneously. So the project's been going for a really long time, at least 20 years. So that's cool. <laughs> Video games. I'm a gamer too. I've yeah. been playing video games forever as well. Like I've been playing since like the first Nintendo came out. It definitely has some nostalgic value from that perspective, but I guess, like, as a mod, as a gamer now, like, this is competing with some serious shit. Like, I play games like Skyrim and The Witcher and World of Warcraft and things like that that have fucking amazing soundtracks. If you haven't listened to any of them, I highly recommend it. All of them have amazing soundtracks, but... Like, when you, again, from a nostalgic perspective, sure, like, 
If you fuck, if, if you play like even like two notes of like the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack, I'm gonna know exactly what the fuck you're listening to because I know that fucking soundtrack. But like, I guess from a musical perspective. I guess now because I've been spoiled from these more modern video games that have these more elaborate soundtracks that I just, I don't know, there's, it's just, this now leaves something sort of like, it's lacking. It's not enough for me. See, I would argue and say this has more character than just like those full on like symphonic soundtracks that, the character, that most games have. I mean, like it's cool they have like full symphonies nowadays, but I still feel like the more simplistic Fantasy Seven and stuff yeah. like that. But like, and it, that that game did have a very simple song. I guess just because of who I am, because of the musical background that I have, and the expectations that I have of what it needs to be, yeah. like like that. What we were just listening to, it was like trying to be this big like musical piece but it was so simple and like in my head all i can hear is all the ways it could be better well i suppose <laughs> well i mean that i view things because of a musician yeah and that when, makes sense yeah. when i when i approach my own music for example like i'm constantly like okay what can i do to make this better how can i improve this this vocal line or how can this this guitar line or this guitar riff be better or how would this drum line be better like how be better and so that's how i like approach and view music so i guess like some of the more simple music i struggle with just accepting it for what it is i guess yeah i'm not saying that it being simple is a bad. for me as an individual when i listen to it it's just I'm thinking like, man, if they added like a few more harmonies to that string line, that would just be feel so more, much more full. And like, if they like added like some voices in like a three part harmony behind that, much cooler. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just who I am as an individual, yeah. and I don't appreciate it. It doesn't to me. It's just. Yeah. Right. I, Makes sense, yeah. I mean, it, like, I mean, can just assume. All right, so I think we are catching up. All right, yeah, we're caught up. All right, we're so, caught up. I mean, I said about RFL was is that I had a bad experience with RFL slash Cephalophagus Records and I not gonna go into details. I'm not gonna go into details. You can privately message me if you want, but I personally would not support that label any further. So do that. It's gonna start a big controversy or whatever, but yeah. So Anyway, I think we're gonna probably, you know, how long we've been. I mean, there's still seven people watching. You 
guys are such troopers. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate you sticking around for this. <laughs> you um, stuck around for this awkward exchange. I mean, I legit hope that we entertained you. Yeah. I mean, this is just, we aren't doing it's basically like conversation that me and Joe have yeah. on our faces. You're, you're just getting, you're getting an intimate look at our, our, our private. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really awesome that you guys uh, tuned in and wanted to hang out with us. Um, really, truly cheers to all of you near and far, wherever you guys are. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Um, it was nice to hang out with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't have anything else to say. I'm. Well, well maybe. I'm sure you guys will probably see me again. I live here, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the best record of the night? Uh, the best record, honestly, I think it was the. I don't know the name of it, but the real like ritualistic one. That was my. Favorite. Oh, the Corona one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. really, I really liked that. I thought that was fucking cool as hell sounding, and I would listen probably. If I had to pick one of those records to listen to, that would be the one. Right. Yeah, right on. Yeah. yeah. So. So there you have it, everybody. Yeah. So <laughs> here's some dark ambient rea reactions from someone that has only been sort of uh, teary me force her to listen to dark ambient for the past five years. <laughs> In future, people that may know literally don't know anything. either literally don't know shit about dark ambient or may actually have some experience listening to it. So it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of you know kind of reactions we get. And uh, all right, so. Um, hopefully next time um, we'll have better weather and our internet will be more dependable. Yeah. Um, despite the, the technical problems, we legit hope that you guys will come back and check this out yeah. again. You guys all have a great rest of your night. Cool. That's it. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. See you next time. Later.